Hey everybody, back with another dividend analysis, and today we're going to be looking at B&G Foods Inc., or BGS. Uh, I wanted to take a look at them because their stock price has recently taken a huge dive, which has forced their dividend up pretty high as we can see here the yield is just at around six and a half percent which is very nice to see doing much better than the broad market and uh, we can see here if this dividend yield supported if we can capitalize on this drop in price or if this is something we should stay away from uh, so as always let's start with the dividend history and see how things have been going for the company uh, going back to 2013, we can see we were getting 32 cents a share, and now we're getting 47.5 cents a share, share eight years later. Uh, so we see there is growth here, but not a ton of growth really. Um, it is not. This is about 50, just just under a 50% increase in dividend in eight years, which isn't bad. Uh, there are companies who don't do anywhere near that, and there are companies that do a lot more. Uh, something to be very cognizant of, though, is over the last what is this five years we've only seen the dividend increase by a penny so we went from increases of a cent to another cent to seven cents to four cents back down to a cent and the dividend hasn't changed at all since 2018 uh, now this is kind of expected especially considering the fiasco that was last year uh, this is a company that is engaged in distributing food so they probably took a big hit due to supply chain and employment issues uh, so if they didn't raise the dividend that's probably because they were conserving capital if I'm invested in a company and they're facing those kind of issues I want to see them be able to support the dividend I currently get rather than raise it to a point where they're not going to be able to support it in the future so just just be just be aware of that as we go further this might this might be okay they might be running out of cash to pay it off we're gonna have to go through and look at that just this by itself doesn't tell us much but we do see that they haven't cut the dividend at all so that is good at least uh, let's start by looking at the dividends that they paid out and last year they paid out 122 million dollars in dividends uh, and we can go check and see if that was supported by the cash flow uh, da, da, da. And if we go over the last four quarters, we can see that they did $217 million in free cash flow. Uh, if we put our 122 and divide that by our 217, we can see that they did about 56% uh, payout ratio. Uh, not ideal, not below 50%, but well below the acceptable range of 75%, so no issues. If their cash flow drops a little bit, the dividend will still be able to support it. If they do raise it a little bit, they're still going to be able to well support that. No big issue there. Uh, the, one ish the one issue that they do have is that their cash flow is a little spotty, as we can see going over 12-month periods. We go from 217 down to 14. Again, that's 2020, kind of expected. Back up to 140, but then we go back down to 54 million and that's a little concerning then we go back up to 120 then back up to 200 then down to 90 so this is very inconsistent if i'm looking at this i want this cash flow to kind of just consolidate somewhere you know we're, we're looking at 140 120 190 we really want to see this probably be somewhere in the high 100 millions maybe 170 to 180 if it can consolidate around there it should be fine uh this the five-year average of 109 million does not account uh, for the dividend enough you're going to be over hundred percent so we do need to see this this cash flow increase if this company is going to be able to continue supporting this dividend uh, next we can go and check our income and see if that supports our dividend as well again we'll look at our four quarters uh, net income we can see that we are at hundred and thirty million which just barely covers our dividend if we do the math there we can see 122 divided by 130 we are sitting at 90 just under 94 percent so above our acceptable range there uh, what does that mean that means if they drop in income anymore their income is not going to be able to support their dividend they are going to be bringing in less money than they are sending out money in dividends now if this happens for a year or two a company can usually survive that they can do cash flow tricks they, there might be write-offs, there might be depreciation that affects that. However, if that continues for an extended period, that becomes a real issue. If we actually look at their income, we can see we went from 53 up to about 205, then we tailed off a little bit. But we are still above the average of the previous five years. We can see 53 to 82, now we're up to 130. So there is definitely an increase in income, but it's not. It's just not quite enough. 94% is a little bit scary. You really want to see that number below 75%. So 
for the next year or two, we really want to see this income increase really back up to this 205 level we were at previously. S somewhere between these two years here would be really nice. High 100s, just like our cash flow, to be able to pay out at a comfortable rate. All right, one other thing I wanted to look at was the debt for this company. Now, while they do have plenty of money on hand to pay off their current liabilities, they do have quite a bit of total debt considering the amount of money they bring in. As we can see here, we're sitting at about $3 billion in total debt, which is really consistent over the last, what's this, seven years? That's really, that's really about where they've been sitting. However, if we go back to the income, we see they're only bringing in about $100 million a year. That means it's going to take them a long, long time to pay off that debt. If I'm invested in this company, I really don't want to see dividend increases. If this income increases and if that cash flow increases, I want to see that debt get paid down first because if there is another issue like another 2020, they could be in for some real trouble if they aren't make, making enough money to be able to meet their debt obligations. So that's that's one thing I would really be careful of with this company and a lot of food distribution companies in general. They tend to operate on very very rough debt for that other companies might see. Just be very careful with this. Make sure that their income is increasing. Make sure they're able to meet those debt obligations. If you see the dividend increasing while the, this income and this cash flow are staying where they are, I'd start to get very skeptical, skeptical of this company's ability to be able to maintain paying that dividend. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so where does BGS get their money from to do this anyway? Uh, they're a wholesaler, which means they essentially sell uh, the food to retailers and other uh, other sellers. Anybody who's selling food, they're going to first sell it to them usually, and then get them. Then they're going to resell it to the consumer. Um, as we can, tr one thing we can see is that they have a they have a much higher margin than than the retail side. Retail grocery is really going to be around three percent. Uh, whereas here we're looking at about six and a half to seven percent, which is very good. So just just be very careful. This is this is an income game here. We need to see the income increase and the cash flow increase if they're going to be able to keep paying their dividend. If they're able to do that, I think this is fine. This this for a six percent yield that that'll be fine. However, if this stagnates or if this or if the cash flow say returns to where it was last year or the year before. Or I'm sorry, two years before, you're going to start running into a lot of problems. So just be very careful with that. So should you be buying BGS? Should you not? Is there a play here? What should you be doing? Uh, from the dividend appreciation side, there's probably not any anything really here. As I said before, I really wouldn't want to see them raise their dividend unless they get a huge influx in income over the next couple years. I'd like to see this dividend stay where it is. At 6.5%, you really don't need much of an increase there unless something crazy happens. I'd really want to see this stay at 47.5 cents, see them pay down their debt, see them get their income and cash flow levels up so that they could in the future maybe raise that dividend. Uh, from an income perspective, that's where I think your play is here. 6.5% is definitely an income percentage. Um, if, if you have an income portfolio and you're looking for companies to put into it, this, this could be something you put into, say, a, cons a consumer sector of your portfolio. Say you're setting up chunks of your portfolio into, you know, uh, consumer staples, communications, energy, technology, healthcare, so on and so forth. You might take something like BGS and you might combine that with something like a Pepsi and or an Altria and make those two or three companies a section of your portfolio. That way, if one of them does poorly, the other one's probably going to support it. You could say, for example, take BGS, combine it with Pepsi, which has a much lower yield but still pays a dividend, pay, put half in each, and that dividend's going to equate out to a total of like 4 to 5% instead, which is still pretty good and gives you a little bit of risk mitigation with through diversity. Uh, besides that, there's not a lot here. You're not going to see capital appreciation with this. Being, being in the food business, doing what they do, you're really not going to see appreciation beyond GDP. If you're in this for the long term, 10, 15, 20 years, you're likely going to just move with GDP up and down the chart. If you get in at a certain time, like for instance, they're down you know, from $34 down to 28. Of course, if you get in here, maybe you get lucky and you hit another run up to that 34 range just because of very short term cyclical uh, movement. 
but on the long term you're you're not gonna this isn't gonna be a big this isn't gonna be an apple this is gonna be a walmart you're not gonna your money isn't going to you know double triple quadruple over 20 years it's just it's just not very likely but that's okay if you're just looking for the income six and a half percent is fine so that's that's definitely where we're we're at for this you're just looking at that income perspective uh, i hope this helps and thanks for watching